And welcome to segment six this evening. Um, our guests are Cedric Crenshaw and Lisa Reitinger. And um, we're talking, the show this evening uh, was about the transgender issues in, uh, in high schools and elementary schools, for that matter. And one of the things we wanted to talk about a little in a little more detail, you know, how is this actually being implemented? Because they make it sound like, well, you know, it's, uh, it's okay because there's options. Children are being forced into intimate spaces like restrooms and locker rooms. And the evidence is found right here in the District 211 lawsuit. The statements of fact bear that out. And I just want to read just a bit of this so people can really understand how these children are being violated. Now you might think, well, there's, there's privacy stalls in the locker rooms and what's the big deal? You, know, you just go in and you go in the privacy area if you want privacy. Well, the student, the transgender student in question, student A, has the option to use the privacy stall. It doesn't have to according to the agreement. And the privacy stalls are in the middle of the locker room. So this student, he, can, he has to walk through the locker room where the other girls are changing out in the open to get to his privacy stall. He can come out of the stall whenever he wants to when the girls are still changing. Um, so there's really no privacy. Let's put it that way. Is this actually going on right now? This is it's going already on started. right now in Palatine Chamber mm -hmm. District 211. Right, because even before the lawsuit, they were trying to negotiate and make accommodations. They were trying to deal with it on their own and, and satisfy the student and I assume his family and all of that. They were trying to handle it on their own before the Department of Education ever got involved. I didn't so know this that. has been going on for a while. Yes, really? he had a separate accommodation. Uh, a separate mm -hmm. facility where he was able to change. He didn't have to change in the boys' locker room, but that wasn't good enough. And, and the district acknowledged the reason they did that is to protect the privacy of the girls. Right. Mm -hmm. The other 98%. Right. 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 Yeah. And I just wanted to add something real quick before Cedra um, uh, talks more about the lawsuits. Um, you know, most people are aware to a certain extent of what's been happening with District 211 and the lawsuit, but what might be less known is one of the accommodations student A requested was to have a changing area where student A could invite female friends so that they could all change together. Oh, that's fun. Not one of student A's friends would agree to do so. So according to, these, to the news reports, these girls care deeply for their friend student A, yet they did not feel comfortable changing in front of their friend. So what does that tell you? Are, are they transphobes now? No, they're human, normal. Mm -hmm. Exa yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember my high school sweetheart, father, man of few words, <laughs> said to me early on in the relationship, no specific terminology. He looked at me and he said, it looks like she's interested in you. And I, you know, oh, and he goes, I will know. That's all he said. I will know. <laughs> And it had a chilling effect, you know. <laughs> it really did. When he said, "I will." Well, no. Today we're, we're a little blunter. I go, you know, I got a backhoe, twenty acres, you know. But back then, I will oh, know. No. That was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, it, it, this is a this is a serious problem, and mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. It yeah. gets even more serious, and and for those who think, well, you know, if a girl wants more privacy, just just go to the privacy curtain yourself mm -hmm. if you don't like it. Well, there was actually at least one girl who's one of the plaintiffs who did just that. And when she used the privacy area, she was called transphobic and homophobic. And word spread throughout the school uh, that she used the privacy area to change. And so people started calling her derogatory names and accusing her of being transphobic and homophobic. So because of being ridiculed like that, she no longer wanted to use the privacy stall. And instead, she's been wearing her PE clothes under her regular clothes and just keeps them on throughout the day. She's one of the plaintiffs in the suit. So the privacy stall has been used to intimidate and harass students. That's the reality of the privacy stall. And at the end of the day, the federal government has no business getting into people's personal lives. Right, of course not. They just have no business being there. They're supposed to build highways. Right. They're supposed to, you know, not let you commit murder in Illinois and go mm -hmm. to Indiana and get away with it. Yeah, uh, we the, want a standing army. We want roads. That's, right. 
That's right. pretty much, you know. Do that's, something that's useful. That's most of it, right. Yeah, do something <laughs> useful. Um, so the kids themselves, you've talked to kids who've gone through this? No, I have not. I've just, I've just read the, the lawsuit. We have a letter that the students wrote, but it gets even worse. The gymnastics locker room mm -hmm. and the swimming locker room are both completely open. There are no privacy areas in those locker rooms. And so any of the, the girls that are in gymnastics or any other sports have to change out in the open, change into their leotards in front of this student who was on the gymnastics team last year and will be on the team again next year. Uh, just one moment. This is the girls' gymnastics team yes. that the guy was on. Yes. Is he Russian? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm I, not well, that was very common. <laughs> the Olympics, yeah, that you know. was done. <laughs> Perhaps. Here's Helga, six that foot eight, done. 300 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And, and something else to note about the swimming locker room. Swimming is a required PE class for freshmen and sophomores. And sophomores. Oh, perfect. The girls age. have the youngest, no choice. Right. They must change in the swimming locker room. Even if they were to wear their swimsuit under, they have to change out of it. The showers are in the open, and many of them shower to, to rinse off the chlorine. Mm -hmm. It's all in the open. Yeah. And, and this student A can access those, those locker, that locker room as well, according mm -hmm. to this agreement. Well, and so, not, not to be too graphic, but we are on the internet. Um, uh, just FYI for any men who wouldn't know, even though gymnastics is done in leotards and sometimes tights, um, typically you don't wear underwear exactly. under that. So right. sometimes, sometimes it's sports bra, but generally no, mm -hmm. no underwear because it would show and it would peek out and things like that. So generally, I mean, you're like stripping down mm -hmm. right. completely mm -hmm. to be able to get dressed for gymnastics and swimming. Seriously, a year ago, if somebody said, boys, whatever the situation, are going to go into girls' locker rooms and take showers together. Would you have believed it a year ago? No. This is, this is like every day is a you-know-what sandwich, and we're taking another bite with this administration. No. This is like, this goes beyond the pale. This is worse than predator drones flying overhead and, and NSA. This is like looking at naked children. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, that just blows me away. Right. And at the same time, we're going after, you know, pedophiles and people who who produce or look at child porn the the government mm -hmm. is promulgating this right uh, how can how can you do both i it doesn't make any sense well, well uh, no sense i mean just uh, talking about some of the crimes the the sexual uh, uh, crimes and physical assaults against women and children I mean, we all you know heard this past month in at a chicago J jason's deli uh, a 33 year old man reese hartstern choked an eight-year-old girl until she was unconscious, right? He was apprehended carrying her unconscious body into the bathroom stall. So he choked her unconscious, apparently, while she was, you know, I don't know if she was by, um, you know, the sink or whatever, and the mother heard her screaming, walked in there, and he was carrying her into the stall. Um, I mean, I have, we have lists, tons and tons of crimes, 39-year-old Thomas Benson, who had, a prior sex, who had prior sex offenses against five to nine-year-old girls, was arrested after he entered a woman's locker room in Oregon. A man claimed a right to use a woman's locker room at a public swimming school pool. This was recently, in 2016. This was in Seattle. In Seattle. That's right. Um, so he claimed a right to use a woman's locker room at a public swimming pool after he after his partially undressing them are there caused an alarm to the, the women and the children who were in there. So when the staff asked him to leave, he said, the law has changed and I have a right to be here. And he wasn't presenting as a woman. He didn't claim to be transgender. Right. No, he just walked, walked right, right in, in as a man in there while there are women and little girls changing into their swim, swimming suits. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, they proved that with Target, there was men who videotaped themselves telling the management at Target that they were heterosexual, they were not transgender, could they use the, la the girls and ladies dressing in bathroom? Yes, you can. It, it would be discrimination if you said no. Pretty much Which, so. Is that bizarre? Actually, as I recall, the last time I've used a Target fitting room, I believe they're unisex anyway. Fitting rooms are. 
Yeah. Some, some yeah. thinner. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Of them are, well, yeah. so is uh, yeah. um, Coles. And yeah. It, I mean, there, but, but you actually the, have, yeah. you actually some have of wooden are. rooms. And some of the, uh, yeah, like um, Banana Republic, I've been, those are unisex. You know, if you think about it, though, these laws, these policies, are they're really sexist. Well, yeah, because you're right? the victim, not the guys. Are. Well, they promote inequality and sure. they're sexist because basically you have lawmakers, typically who are men, telling us as women how, how what privacy or not privacy rights that we have to our own bodies. Yeah, they're basically, how sexist is that? Basically, our feelings don't matter. And I'm telling would, the girls, just get over it. That's right. I, I would know. put 20 bucks on the table that no restroom in the House or the Senate, yes, allows. Yeah, you men would think to go they would women. lead the way. That's right. Why well, don't they lead the way? They do lead the way out the back door. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. You know that's true. I, you just know that's true. And along that line, in District Two Eleven, they had opened up the restrooms to Student A without parental knowledge or consent. And the way some of the plaintiff girls found out about it was when they encountered Student A in the restroom. Just walked in. Just yes. He, he was in there. And that's how they found out that uh, boys were allowed in the girls' restroom. Do we have the solution to this? Because we could go on all night. Yes, we could. Well, I, I just wanted to... The students in their own Yeah, words. some of the students in their own words. This is a letter that they wrote to... Um, District 211 Board of Education, as well as the Illinois lawmakers. And I'm just going to read some of this. Um, By standing up for ourselves and our rights, we have been labeled as insensitive and inhumane for defending the majority. We are being perceived as bullies, but in reality, we have never bullied student A or anyone. We recognize student A as a human being, one who deserves to be treated with respect, compassion, and kindness. Still, we would expect the same in return. Student A, you are accepted. We have talked to you and even shared makeup and fashion tips with you. You're a part of our school community and we have always treated you with respect. Although we can never fully understand your personal struggle, try to understand that we too are experiencing our own personal, emotional, psychological, medical struggles. Our struggles hold just as much merit as yours and therefore need to be respected as well. The majority of us here today have experienced varying degrees of bullying and we understand the anxiety and psychological trauma that a victim goes through. It is truly sad that a body of civil servants, revered, respected adults, is choosing the request of a single person over the rights of multiple individuals that they are supposed to protect. And that's really, that's really it in a nutshell. That's it. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's it. Some we, people's rights are more important than others. We do have a um, comment on Facebook. Um, Matt says, does anyone ask why this is happening? Because when we look at the ultimate goals of anti-American groups and the movements to undermine American culture, it's trying to destroy the sovereign individual in us all and conditioning us to accept these demeaning controls. It's all ancient Marxist goals playing out in our midst. Does yes. anyone else see this? Yes, yes. very just, much so. Basically, basically it's a clash of worldviews. It's lies versus the truth. The best close to this show goes to what you have been saying all along about George Orwell. Mm -hmm. 1984 was supposed to be a warning, not an instruction manual. And that's exactly what's happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we didn't solve the problem, but I hope it, it raises awareness. And uh, I think the best advice has come out of Congress unofficially, and that is ignore it. States should just say, no, we're not going to do it, period. Um, I don't know that but, they have the backbone, but that's what we should do. And citizens need to get involved. We really need to stand up. Stand up to your Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Stand up to your lawmakers. Talk about this in your community. Raise your voice. That's what, that's what needs to happen. The church needs to get involved. Pastors need to be shepherds and, and, and take care of their flock instead of leaving us the flock out there basically for any wolves to come and, and pick us mm -hmm. off. And that's really what's been happening, mm -hmm. is that we look to our pastors, they're supposed to be the good shepherd. And a lot of silence. A lot mm -hmm. of silence. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, as always, we didn't solve anything. But why not? It was a good show. We investigated a lot. We investigated Thank you for listening to uh, Segment 6, and we certainly do appreciate Cedra and Lisa coming in, and we'll have you on again sometime. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. having us.